Okay, hey folks, this is Dan with Metamaniacs. We're here with another deck profile for you. Here we have Dylan Hickel. How's it going? Dylan is, of course, the uh, co-host of the Metamaniacs podcast, and he recently took second place in the Metacross uh, Octagon League tournament with his GCPD deck. And what we're doing here for you guys is just a little bit of a deck profile. We've got the whole deck laid out right here. And what we're going to do is have Dylan just kind of explain how he built this deck and what his deck is trying to accomplish here and uh, how it did for him in the Octagon League tournament. So go ahead and uh, take it away, Dylan. All right, so we'll start off here with Harvey Bullock. Harvey's just a key card for the deck just because the ability to swing with even not him and then just untap characters after combat and have them up for defense afterwards is key. Moving on to James Gordon, I only run two of him because... At least in my locals, I don't see a ton of five or higher battle cards because the stats just weren't played as much. So I, I tested around and just settled on two. But negating five and higher battle cards ends up taking a lot of key cards out. James Gordon, key character, able to search out two characters, just makes the deck run so much smoother. GSPD officers, drawing two while keeping your deck at an even level without losing cards, I guess. It's just key, I guess, again. Catwoman I love because GCPD Officers has a hard time getting battle cards back in. So putting battle cards back in and drawing them off GCPD Officers, it just helps the decks run smoothly at later ends of the game. Okay, yeah, that's great. The uh, you know the key about the GCPD deck that, that you noticed, not to use the word key again, I guess, but um, is that they have so much recursion, right? So um, how you know how do you feel that recursion that they get from the GCPD officers shuffling things in and uh, James Gordon you know tutoring the characters back out? Um, how do you feel that uh, lends you advantage in in the games? Do you do you see that you get games going along with this deck and that helps you out? I, I feel like it adds consistency. I can shuffle in certain characters and then I can just grab them right back out if I need them. So consistency, I guess, is just the key word in helping games go well. Consistency is key. Uh, let's look at your events now. What's you've got quite an interesting event package. You've got I've got to kind of back up a little here, bit here for this, but you've got a total of nine events, which is actually higher than a lot of decks tend to be running. It looks like, um, and you've got some interesting choices. So let's step through what you got. Starting off, I just want to say that this build was testing a lot of different cards, and I liked that part about it. Um, I ran two disgraced because. Constantine is a shutdown for this deck in a very big way. So Disgrace helps take care of that or other constant effects that just need to be taken care of. Or if there's none on the field, just being able to draw two cards can help at a tight situation. Rebirth, shuffling those battle cards, just uh, another one of way. Lose battle to win the war. I just like reusing battle cards, so testing out a card that I felt was a bit underused, seeing if this was the spot for it, or maybe if it wasn't. Identification, seeing if hand control was the right area for the deck, because keeping certain key cards out of people's hands that could lose me the game helps out best. And then Gotham City's Finest. Being able to pull from zero characters to three characters is just awesome. So in the uh, MXOLT, Mason, uh, your Metamaniacs podcast host, uh, was also playing a GCPD deck, and he ran three copies of Gotham City's Finest. You ran just one. Can you explain a little bit about uh, kind of what your thought process was there? For a three of, I feel like my deck would want to be running more aggressive, just sheer aggressive, not hand control. And when it came down to it, whenever I needed the one, I had the one, and I didn't need to get it back. Sure, and you, you certainly aren't lacking in draw power here, uh, including with the GCPD officers, James Gordon tutoring them back out constantly, Harvey setting up your discard pile so you can shuffle the officers back in and draw more cards. Uh, so I'm certain, uh, along with your battle cards here, you've got plenty of ways to get to that single copy. Um, let's look into your battle cards now. Let's talk about what your choices are here. Starting off with the strength two, I find myself sometimes cornered in an area where I only have my one entering effects, or I may need the James Gordon that shuts down fives, or a Harvey to prep my characters again. So the strength two helps in just opening up that spot, as well as adding a little bit of draw power. The intelligence two was another testing area where I didn't know if MP control was going to be very viable in the tournament, so I tested out losing MP and then drawing cards. It turned out a bit effective. Special one, grabbing back battle cards again in combat just can prove to be a bit devastating. 
the special three drawing two cards just fit the deck a little too well but running a two of is definitely key rather than running three unless i was being hyper aggressive again the special four is a key for hand control with this deck just because drawing a card and then having your opponent lose a card just it's just too much value. I mean, yeah, that's that's this card is kind of one of the things that the value package of the GCPD deck is based off of. So, of course, you're going to be running this guy. The multi one helps with getting out characters when I'm also stuck with a dead board, like switching a GCPD officers for a Harvey Bullock, or the other way around to shuffle cards back in to draw more cards. And then the multi three or the omni three, I guess, just grabs me key cards like James Gordon, so I can keep grabbing out more characters when I need them. It's more of that consistency, exactly. Uh, this multi one was, um, I think, the only card in your list that we had on the list of most played battle cards during the MXOLT. Of course, this thing is just a, it, it's a house, and it gives you a lot of options, especially when you're running, you're running a deck full of these when entering players, play, uh, characters, I should say. Uh, all right, so that's your list here now. Um, if you don't mind, just tell me a little bit about uh, how you thought this played out. We know what happened in the finals, of course. So uh, uh, you took the we got the we got the video up on Metamaniacs. You guys can watch Mason comments through the whole thing, um, which is really awesome. And you can watch that and have some fun. But of course, in the end, uh, Ricky took it with his excellent, uh, very very clean Rogues Gallery build. Um, but you did very well uh, making it obviously to finals and and through Swiss. Can you so before finals? Can you tell us a little bit a bit? about those uh, matchups that you had. Throughout the matchups, I f draw power wasn't always a thing that I saw, so taking away the cards ended up being a bit more crucial than it would be if I was playing against a deck like Ricky's where he could just grab those battle cards back with an Intelligence 4. So you felt that um, a lot of the decks you are playing against were maybe a little low on draw power, which gave advantage to your discard deck? I felt like that was a big key. And there wasn't a lot of surprise until it came down to Eric's deck, which I felt was my biggest struggle. Eric had a very cool deck. That was a that was a deck that basically um, didn't really care what your opponent was doing and just found ways to sneak in attacks, VPs, as often as it could. So a uh, very strong deck as well. Um, so when it came down to the finals, uh, how do you feel that that match went with, uh, with Ricky, who had um, all the draw power built in with Jokers and everything? I felt like it was it was very evenly paced the first game. We both were throwing at each other. We both were pulling back our punches and then just sending them heavier than ever. And then eventually I, I lost my mindset, and I guess I, I felt like I lost control. Do you think uh, if you guys had a few more matches, do you think uh, things would ever come up in your favor, or is that just a tough matchup for you? I feel like that's just a tough matchup with that Intelligence 4 that can grab them back or allow them to be played... At, for attacking or blocking yeah it's a lot of um it's i guess it's a thing that pretty directly just prevents your strategy from working as well when he can just play everything out of the discard pile again so um but it's definitely interesting you know part of the game is always having these matchups and uh and finding ways to tweak your deck to deal with those so speaking of tweaking your deck um everyone i've talked to has said since the you know the mxo ulti started in mid-july and we're here in September right now, and everybody's basically said, yeah, the deck I was playing is not the current version of the deck. So what kind of ways have you iterated on this GCPD deck uh, over time, and uh, what are you currently like testing or playing with? I'll start off with the battle cards. The Intelligence 2 that, run that I was running, they it was good, but when I switched it out to oh, being... Transformation. When I switched it out to being this Intelligence 2 that Ben had talked about, it just seemed infinitely better, because... Now with a deck that focuses on controlling where cards are and where I want them to be, being able to shuffle away those basic battle cards and not letting him be able to play them from discard or grab them back from discard oh, is I, monumentally better. I really like this. You basically had my question, an answer to my question planned out already, so that's <laughs> that's excellent. Um, and by the way, this they talk, uh, I should say Mason and Dylan do talk about this card on the recent episode of the Metamaniacs podcast, so make sure to check that out. It is my favorite currently. Uh, moving on to the special three, I felt that that special three afforded too much draw power, that I was getting close to decking myself too often, so I would use it on attack. So I switched it out for the attack on Titan special three, just so I can have more character takeout on board. Well, not only that, but this is such a, a cool card in your deck because it gives you another discard outlet, which lets you set up your board to be able to shuffle in characters with GCPD officers to get the card draw when you do need it to. Mm -hmm. Or, since you're running Catwoman in this build, you can also just recur the cards that you put uh, into the discard with that. So, I like that a lot. 
What else have you done? As for events, it's been a bit more difficult of an area. For Lose the Battle to Win the War, I switched it out to just one. Joke's on you. Because I found more often than not, my opponents would just let the attack go through so they wouldn't have to deal with me recurring the battle card. And then I could just grab it from discard and use it again. Sure. Because um, you're interested in reusing these battle card effects like Special 4, especially a lot, a little more so than you are just trying to pressure a, a couple of early VPs. Yes. I also added one more identification because taking cards out for free is just... Or for two MP yeah. rather than higher is that seemed like that seemed like a choice I was expecting you to make going into the iteration. So very along strong with card. that line, I also added in three of echolocation, taking out a disgrace and both of the I guess uh, rebirths. Because with Catwoman, I found that I had enough recursion enough, and the decks weren't going long games weren't going long enough where I needed to use them both. So having three echolocations made it so I could be a bit more controlling the whole game. Awesome. Well, those sound like some really solid changes. I really like where your build is shifting to. You're definitely going harder on the discard side, but of course that's always strong. And now you have to look out because Ricky's got a uh, Rogue's Harley Quinn that he can put in that totally shuts down your discard too. Oh, no. So yeah, there's a there's always a counter to the counter. So, uh, but it's interesting to see how your deck develops. Again, um, congratulations on your. Uh, Second place win on the MXOLT, and uh, you know I still have to give you your prizes actually, so I better Ooh, I better grab those. those. Yep, you get some prizes too. Um, and uh, you guys keep an eye out. We're going to be dropping some info on the second MXOLT coming soon. Um, if you like this deck profile, if you like this stuff, go ahead and uh, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think. Like the video on YouTube. Um, subscribe. Do all that good stuff. Uh, make sure to check out metamaniacs.com for more content, and check out the Metamaniacs podcast where you can hear more of Dylan's thoughts on all these really cool cards. Thanks a lot, Dylan.